welcome to the first episode of 40 in Photography, where we look at paranormal photographs and try to figure out the truth behind them. designer and photographer for the Singular Fortean Society. And I'm Tobias Wayland, the Singular Fortean Society's head writer and editor. So today we're going to look at a photograph called The Cooper Family and the Falling Man. So uh, Emily, can you start us off by giving us a little bit of backstory on this photograph and where it may have come from? Sure, so I've done some research and so have some others. Um, but there is no real understood source to where this photograph came from. Hoaxes.org allegedly found that it had been posted by someone to a horror writer's website. I think it was um, Thomas Ligotti. Ligotti, did I say that right? I don't know. Who knows? I mean, we don't know that for sure. But it was originally posted to a, a horror fandom forum? Is, yes. is that right? Okay. Yes. So, before we even get into an examination of the photograph itself, uh, I think that it's important to, to take careful note of the fact that the first known uh, uh, location um, of this photograph um, was at a site specifically uh, uh, target, uh, targeted towards you know, fans of horror fiction. And it also, like, I mean, it's, the, the internet just makes it so hard, especially, I mean, I feel like websites like this, it's like, almost like a game of telephone. Sure. So, like, this might not even be the first place it was posted, and also they, it could have been anywhere between 2009 and 2013. Sure, fair enough. And, you know, honestly, we don't have to look any further than, say, Slenderman to find um, an example of the internet producing, um you know, uh, horror, horror fiction and presenting it as, as fact, as a, a sort of, of myth-making exercise. Exactly. So the story goes that the Cooper family, sometime in the 1950s, moved to a new home in Texas, and this photograph was of their first night home. So in this photograph, we see four family members, an, an older woman, a more middle-aged, maybe mother-looking woman, and then two children. And they're all smiling, happy at the camera. We don't know this for sure, but we could assume that the father is taking this photo. But anyways, they're all looking at the photographer, the flash is shining on them, they're all happy and smiling. But then off to the left side of the frame, if we're facing it, we see this blurry image of a, a spooky, falling, hanging man. So that's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Now, obviously, uh, we're making some assumptions when we, uh, we, we we glance at this photograph and apply some narrative to it. Um, but I, I, I think that um, even a, a cursory uh, examination of the photo um, uh, uh, reveals that it certainly seems as though uh, its its intent is to create this this narrative of a family photograph. Exactly. So, again, we might, I mean, this might not even be the Cooper family. We sure. don't know where that's traced from. But Could this be is, anybody. This is just what we've known and read based on what people are saying online. Sure. So, actually, just to, to, to go back to what we were talking about before, mm -hmm. when this uh, image first appeared on that, that horror site forum, um, was this backstory already attached to it? That is not known. So okay. this is this was from other forums, website, probably Reddit, mm. you know, creepy pasta stuff like that. So this is just like word of mouth, tele internet telephone game sure. where this story came from. Folklore at work. Exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. fantastic. So I think the first thing that we can look at is that if this photograph is real, or this is really happening within the photograph. The subjects are not reacting to the spooky figure falling off to the left of the camera at all. They just clearly aren't aware of that. And something we 
hear a lot when examining spooky photographs or haunted photographs is that they didn't see it when they took the picture. Mm. So I'm guessing that's the story here. It's one of those, well, I didn't see it when I took the picture, but the ghost reappeared after the fact, after I got it developed. Sure. And now we can assume uh, that a certain type of camera would have had to have been used um, back in the, the uh, 50s, and that would be a film camera with a, a, a shutter. Yep. And could you maybe uh, talk a little bit about why it's much less likely um, for something to appear on uh, a, a, a photograph taken from a camera like that um, uh, when somebody claims that, 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 that they didn't see it with their naked eye? Sure. So I just have to say this first off is that if this was happening in front of me and I was the photographer, I don't think this photograph would have happened. Sure. I think I would have been a little spooked or like, hey, what's that? Um, but so we should note that cameras work like our eyes. They're those designed, cameras. those cameras, actually a lot of modern cameras still do. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yes. So how that works is the image and the picture ends through the lens, which translated to our eyes is our eyeball, sure. our iris. So the light and the image enters that in the camera, it bounces off a mirror, and then it reflects back onto the film. Oh, interesting. So, um, honestly, that's almost exactly like our our own eyes work. Right. We technically see upside down, and our brain corrects that, and that's what the job of the mirror is in these cameras. And that's called single light reflex, by the way. Interesting. Good to know. So, mm -hmm. it stands to reason um, that, uh, uh, essentially, it would be physically impossible for something to appear in a photograph like something like uh, uh for something to appear in a photograph like this um but be invisible to the naked eye like that right. that simply shouldn't be possible and that's based with whatever everything we know i mean technically we don't know a lot about paranormal phenomena but from everything that we know absolutely sure. we there should be no reason why something should not be there when you you know something shouldn't be there off right and then sure so i mean that's that's something very interesting to to think about now um from a, a technical standpoint now this is something you know I, I think you're gonna have some some good insight into given your your education and background could you maybe walk us through um from a ten a, a, a technical standpoint um some of the things that you look at in this uh, uh, photograph specifically, and, and maybe what they tell you about the, the uh, image. Sure, so um, so the first thing we can see is that I, that I saw right away is that if you look off, especially to the wall, this photograph is very grainy. Mm. And um, so some way, with vintage film, how this would have worked in the time period, um, this is called, so this is called film speed technically. And how, what that means is that in a darker room, you need a higher, a faster film to make up for the loss of light. So like a 100 speed film would be for like perfect daylight, but like 800 and up, maybe like 3200 speed film is for dark rooms. Okay. We see this in digital cameras now even. Or the images are grainy because they're trying to make up for the lack of light. Okay. And, and on the emulsion. Is that happening in this photograph? I do not think so, and I'll get, we'll talk more about this, but they definitely mm. used a flash, so I don't see why there would be any reason to use a high-speed film here. Because this photo is grainy, I'm going, it looks like there's been some Photoshop filters thrown on it, or it was uploaded at, with a scanner at poor resolution. Okay, so just, just to uh, recap here, mm -hmm. basically what you're saying is, um, the graininess of the image itself, given that a flash was used um, when the picture was taken, uh, seems artificial, as though somebody added the graininess in after the picture was taken. Is that, that correct? Correct. Be okay. that through Photoshop or a scanner. And sometimes sure. people apply these effects because they want it to look spooky. So if somebody mm. was making a piece of horror fiction art, they would add this grain to make it look old. and Sure kind of creepy. I mean, it does add that quality of it. Interesting. Okay, and so um, how precisely do you know that a flash was used and, um, well, really, can you just can you just tell us a little bit more about that? 
Yes, exactly. So um, the subjects are very well lit. They are extremely illuminated in comparison to the rest of the picture, where the rest of the room seems kind of dark. Mm -hmm. And there, are there is barely any shadow cast behind them, which means they are hit suddenly with a very bright, hard light. Okay. So, and given the fact that this light is so <clears throat> focused on the subjects, versus the rest of the image. It was probably like a somewhat dark room in the evening. It looks like they had been sitting down to dinner. Mm. And there's candles that are lit here. That that's what I that is what makes me assume that this was hit with flash. Especially so the flash was probably and it's directly on them too. Mm. So the flash was mounted on the hot shoe, which is the top of the camera, and then it's shown directly on them. Okay, so from the the shadows present and uh, the angle and lack from, thereof. Sure, and and the angle from which you can tell the subjects were illuminated. Um, most likely, when this picture was taken, there was a flash mounted to the top of this camera. Correct. So, um, what does that mean about the rest of the image? For instance, uh, is the light from that flash interacting with the image of the falling man the same way as it is the rest of the, the people uh, in the photograph? Oh, absolutely not. Um, it almost looks, so if you're looking at the image, to our right side, there is a very soft, faint, somewhat focused, but soft light. Almost like a, it's being hit with like a flashlight. And then off to the back of the wall and to the left slightly, there is a shadow. Okay. And so, if this, if this figure had been in the same photograph, we should assume that he would also be well lit, like the whole family is. You can see every detail on their face. There is not a shadow on their body, on their physical being. Because of the flash. Because of the flash, whereas he's mostly in shadow, except for that right side, which means a weaker, softer light mm. is only illuminating that part of him. Okay, fair enough. Um, and, uh, you know, <clears throat> I think some people might ask, uh, you know, why would light interact with, um, you know, a, a ghost or a spirit the same way that it, it, it would with um, physical beings in a, a, a photograph or something? And, you know, I, honestly, I don't know that we have a good answer for we that. We really don't. But at the same time... Um, consider, you know, why would, uh, say, something like a, a ghost or spirit, which, um, you know, may only exist, say, on the level of, of consciousness, or certainly in some ephemeral aspect, appear on the film at all. Um, so, how do you best explain the, uh, the, the, the difference in lighting between the, the falling man image and the, the image of, of the family in this photograph? I think that they're completely different pictures. I think that this falling man figure was taken from one photograph with one lighting situation and then superimposed into this photograph. And we don't know if somebody was trying to hoax it or if it was horror art. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is that there is no, like, think about if, like, the ghost was, like, showing up like an apparition, like a hologram or something. Um, the the light would react the same way it would with these people. Okay, interesting point. Um, there are a lot of interesting questions raised, I think, uh, not only from the uh, standpoint of considering how a ghost could appear on film, um, but also, you know, why if it did, it would be um, interacting uh, uh, with the, the light sources available differently. and. Uh, potentially not uh, not observable by the naked eye to the the, the people present, you know, um, at the, the the scene. Are there any other telltale marks um, on the photograph um, that would point towards somebody having inserted, uh, excuse me, having inserted the the image of the falling man? Well. Hard to say, but the falling man is blurred, and we don't know if the original photograph had that figure in motion, mm -hmm. but it is possible to add motion in post to make it appear as though it's moving or a little blurry, a little ghosty. 
Now, is that something that uh, might commonly be used by somebody familiar with Photoshop to disguise something like the telltale pixelization of um, an image having been inserted? Yes, and I think with that, there's also other filters, like we talked about the graininess. Um, actually, do you know what a vignette is? Um, actually, I do not, but if I may, I'm not sure pixelization is a word. I may have meant pixelation. So I think it's pixelation. Okay, great. Did I, I, say, I wonder if I said pixelization too because he just said it. I don't know. I have no idea, <laughs> but we meant pixela uh, pixelation. So we are actually educated. Yeah. I'm well, sorry. she is. Okay. You are in a different way. Thanks. Anyways, so back to vignettes. Um, and this was one of the last things I noticed about this photograph, and this kind of falls in line with the pixelation <laughs> of the photo. So a vignette is something that it happens through an indiscrepancy within the lens in a camera. And this was actually really common with older cameras. Mm -hmm. And this is why um, their vignettes are seen on like our Instagram filters. Like people put vintage effects like vignettes on photographs to give them that older look. So what we're looking at is how it's very dark in each corner. It's a very soft, almost black gradient, but as you go more towards into the actual subject of the photo, it fades out to completely, be completely clean. Okay. And mo because this was kind of like a an technical thing of the camera, usually the shape of the vignette would be somewhat irregular. And but in this photograph, the corners are all very even, which makes me think that it was placed in through Photoshop. Okay. So, um, it, is it fair to say that it's possible that the, the darkness on the, the border could have appeared naturally, but uh, given the, the circumstances uh, that we know of as far as the lighting, um, that's present, it would be extremely unlikely for that to happen. And that's exactly correct. And just given the fact that we see so much graininess and so and that vignette, it just seems like somebody's just like, I'm gonna throw some more filters on this and okay. so, make it extra spooky or whatever they were trying to do here. Sure, fair enough. Uh, now, it, it, it kind of sounds like in summation, uh, we've got a photograph with um, no known or traceable history, uh, so of dubious origin, frankly, exactly. mm -hmm. um, with uh, a whole slew of seemingly deliberate <laughs> um, obfuscations and manipulations. Correct. And we don't know if this was somebody trying to fool people or if somebody was just like, I don't know, I'm going to make a spooky picture. I mean, sure. I do that sometimes for our articles. I say what they are. Well, we would never portray exactly. any manipulated exactly, image but as like, being legitimate, of course. As it travels through the folklore of the internet. Sure. I mean, we don't know what the intention was here, but all I can say is that it was photoshopped. Now, we've used the word folklore here uh, in this video a lot, and something... Uh, that I want to make very clear is that folklore doesn't mean fiction and, and we don't use it interchangeably with that word. Folklore literally means um, any, any knowledge uh, transmitted through traditional means, usually by word of mouth or in this case via the, the internet. So just because uh, we're referring to something as folklore doesn't mean that in and of itself the, the way that the lore surrounding it um, was spread um, means that it isn't true. We, we don't take it that way. Right. So I'd like to hear what you all think of this photo down in the comments. If you want to see other videos like this, subscribe to our channel. And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. We'll be recording at least five more of these episodes, so I'm excited to see where this series will take us. Absolutely. Uh, this was a, a fascinating case. Um, so. Uh, if you are interested in discussing this further, as Emily said, you know, uh, comment below. We're all over social media. There are links provided uh, uh, beneath this video as well. And um, if you like what we do and you're interested in being a part of it, uh, please join the society. Uh, you can sign up to join uh, the Singular Fortean Society through our Patreon page. And, uh, you know, you get all kinds of, of fun, downloadable content, videos, um, monthly live streams, 
and um, you know you you get to be a part of, of, of what we do and uh, and we appreciate the hell out of that frankly so if you believe in this if you believe in in Fortean research um, then uh, we we'd love to have you aboard thanks for watching and we will see you next time